Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Can Native, can Native American Indians say that? Can they say what? Can they, can they say that they, I mean, I don't know about levels here, right? But can they mm -hmm. say that they suffered through something in America? Absolutely. Okay. That's still a melanated being. And okay. before, before, before. So wait, wait, period, so just one second, one second, just for the benefit of the folks out there, because Lola asked me about this the other day, because uh, I know like when you come on, if, if Kevin Dixie's here, you know, there's a, like, it's a buzzword now, melanated. So do you want to like explain that to some people out there that are wondering what because we're talking about words this is a conversation right yeah. now at this moment in this chat about words so what's yeah. what's up what does that word mean to you melanin is a chemical that is in every human's body to varying degrees mm -hmm. and your skin melanin shows up and it charges when it's connected with sunlight okay. it's what charges and activates and then you start to become browner mm -hmm. you get a tan mm -hmm. right melanin is a neurotransmitter it's in your, it secretes from your pineal gland or your third eye. And that neurotransmitter sends signals from your brain, right, mm -hmm. to your twitch fibers and your muscle endings a lot faster. That's why a lot of times they say, well, black people, y'all are just naturally good at sports. Because there's more melanin content, sends those signals from the brain to the muscles to the twitch fibers a lot faster, along with digestion. It's in all of the, you know, it's in a lot of the organs. That's why organs and organ harvesting and trafficking is a big deal, especially in more uh, countries of color. Okay? okay. Okay. Do white people have melanin? Yes. Is their pineal gland a little bit yeah. more calcified than other is, people? So is yeah. this a, is this like a word of pride or something like that? The the. It's not a word of pride. It's a okay. word of science. Okay. It's just science. That's all it is. This is a great book that everybody should check out called Melanin: The Chemical Key to Greatness. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So. So is there melanated. a difference? Is there a difference of melanated and non-melanated yeah melanated okay. can mean all of the people that have a lot of of darker hues mm -hmm. non-melanated meaning skin tone mm -hmm. don't have as much dark hue okay so you you could be you could be native american or indigenous to this place that we call america i.e turtle island mm -hmm. and you could still be melanated so for example up until uh i forget the exact year so don't quote me too hard but there was a time where indigenous people were also classified as Negroes, Negro, black, mm -hmm. black Americans. Okay. You know, that's where the whole theory of like, you have Indian in your family. Mm -hmm. In America, a lot of people say that. We thinking, a lot of people now think they meant Indian like over in India. They mean native to this land, Indian. Right. Yeah, I never thought, uh, yeah, I never thought Indian over like East right. Asian. I'm, I'm, a, I'm East Asian. I never, right. I never thought that when I heard that. I always thought it was Native American, right? Um, you know, uh, although like so, if you, if you know, I know like if you study history, Native Americans uh, owned a lot of African slaves. Native, you know? Native, so and they they owned slaves in general. They owned they had owned each other as slaves. Na natives, natives, uh, natives to this land that we call America. Um, they, they there's a great book called They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertima. Um, like, this is what always blows my mind. People make it seem like only white people only did stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That is a form of bigotry. Mm -hmm. If I get too powerful, I might create slaves. I wouldn't, but my point there is to say that someone, just because they're melanated, didn't have the capacity to keep captives, that's not true. Now, did, we, did uh, the Arabs that in infiltrated Africa first that that along with the Europeans, mm -hmm. did they create a type of very, very brutal slavery that did not exist pr prior to? Absolutely. Chattel slavery was some of the most dehumanizing ever. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean that uh, black people in America didn't own humans, right? Mm -hmm. that, that indentured servitude right. across the globe wasn't a thing before pre-America. Okay, My so, the, so, the, so is, hold on, I'm not trying to, so the word chattel slavery, you're, that, I'm going to assume you're referring to slavery where the people owned are looked at as cattle. Yeah. The, right? It's, it's, and their it's children the and their children's children are property, just like, you know, I've owned goats and stuff like that. And so you're saying that prior to the invention of that, there was no kind of slavery like that? 
No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm okay. saying slavery existed in different types of forms. Mm -hmm. Chattel slavery, the MAFA, M-A-A-F-A, -A -A, mm -hmm. during the transatlantic slave trade was the most brutal. And because slavery existed, indentured servitude was a form of slavery. But that don't mean like I'm going to beat the out of you sun up to sundown, create right. torture devices specifically for your entire people with based on the concept of race. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think indentured servitude, so like on my mom's side, my mom's Indian, and they came into the Caribbean as indentured servants, which means, mm -hmm. and they came to the Caribbean after Africans, right? After uh, England uh, or, or Europe in general banned slavery, right? So they came there, um, in the case of my mom and, and, and uh, my ancestors on that side, because the British were basically exterminating uh, certain races of Indians in India, you know, yep. like my mom's descendant of the Madrasi Indians, um, and a lot of them were came, were thuggies, where the word thug comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, so they decided they were going to get rid of the thuggies because these were basically like roving bands of, uh, you know, they would they they would uh, the undesirable. Well, they would like meet up with you and be real nice with you and all that kind of stuff on the road, and then they would set you up and basically kill you. This is this is like what the history is of it that uh, the British said, right? And so they decided to deal with this by completely eliminating these people, you know, and anyone they found like that, they killed. A lot of people left India for that and other reasons. They came to the, to, uh, the Caribbean as indentured servants. So for like seven years, you work, you work for, this, uh, for this person on a plantation. After that time, you know, you not only get paid, you get land or something like that. You can go off and do whatever you want versus on my dad's side, his ancestors came there just as straight up slaves. And that's what I'm saying. And so that unique, you know, history, mm -hmm. and again, it's, it's layers to it, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, when people are now, because it, it don't just like emancipation, you know, proclamation, and now everything's perfect again. Mm -hmm. You got to fast forward up until like the 1920s when black people was thriving all around the country and we dealt with, and I say we, meaning my lineage. I wasn't mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. I wasn't alive. I wasn't there, mm -hmm. right? But historically, this is this is American history. This is a mm -hmm. part of American history. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that point where people are now, you know, maneuvering and still being attacked, the civil rights movement was bullshit, mm -hmm. red, around, all of those different things. Right. Then you fast forward to a people saying, hey, man, we kind of still getting beat up by police, you know, Rodney King. Hey, man, you know, we still getting killed by police, whatever, whatever. I, I'm Adu Diallo. Mm -hmm. pick, pick one. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. I agree with those conditions that are there that people need to bring attention to. And that's what Black Lives Matter was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a what tough is, it's what, a, is, what it's turned into is some mm -hmm. other shit that I yeah. can't really rock with. Yeah, it's a tough deal. It's a tough deal. A lot of things in life are perspective. And if you didn't experience something or you didn't experience it from that perspective, it's tough for you to deal with it. Right. So. Um, like I can understand where you're coming from because regardless of whatever happened to me anywhere else in the world, when I came to live in America, I can't, you know, I can't escape who I am on the outside. Right. And so I had to deal with a lot of different things. So that's, to me, it's not a, it's not something that I can argue because right. I had to live with that and deal with that. There's some people who never lived with that or from their point of view, there's some people who dealt with things like that from the opposite side. So like I went to school. I grew up in Far Rockaway, New York, and um, at that time, it was mostly black. A lot of uh, people from the Caribbean, Africa, etc., you know, um, and there were very few white kids going to school with me. Those white kids would get their ass kicked on a regular basis mm -hmm. by, by mm -hmm. black kids. I mean, I remember me and my friends would get into fights all the time because, you know, we, we had friends that were white and, and we didn't appreciate you know, people trying to jump them and do all that kind of stuff, right? That's my friend. Why are you trying to beat up yeah, my friend? Yeah, yeah. And, and for me personally, I went through a lot of that. Like being, you know, someone who's mixed and all that kind of stuff. I think when I came here to America, I had a British accent. So I just, you know, I felt it, I fell into categories. Let's put it that way, yeah. right? So th I think a lot of this is experience. Some people just don't see it. You know, or or want to pretend it doesn't exist. Some people see it from this point of view. Some people right. see it from that point of view. Of view. Ultimately, to me, like when people tell me, you know what, I this we're we're having this conversation. I'm out. What that usually says to me, so you're close to this, right? You know, when for me, I'm not close to anything. I think that's like you. I've never had a conversation with you where you said, "Dude, 
I'm not I'm not talking about that. I can't talk about the race relations in America. Yeah, we Let's can talk. We can talk about it. This is how we learn. We 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 can like uh, how how can I say simulate someone else's experience? Just listen to right. the guy. Right. Yeah. And then understand and say, no, I can see where they're coming from, and that's that's the position that I take with BLM. Mm-hmm. I'm able to go. I know officers that mm-hmm. you know. I I I'll never be a rat. Mm-hmm. I'll never tell. Like, I'm not doing anything unlawful at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm just not a rat, though, right? Mm-hmm. So generally, I limit my interaction with law enforcement. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm at the range, so for the, so it's not a big deal, but that's part of my conditioning, right? Mm-hmm. With that being the case, I know officers that put that uniform on mm-hmm. to really help the community, to like, really, man, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a protect the people from the bad guys. Mm-hmm. I'm really going to do my thing. Mm-hmm. With that being the case, those guys feel like they're hemmed up by their sergeant or their captain or their precinct mm-hmm. director and things of that nature. And they're like, yo, man, they're trying to get me to do this bullshit. I'm not out here to like... Well, like and they have it. rats within their thing too, right? Because if they're not going right. along with everyone else is doing and then they're a rat or they're a traitor or they're but crossing they, and, and the... And that's what I'm saying. They yeah. hate it. They hate the concept mm-hmm. of rats. Now, there's a similarity. So, for example, teachers. There's some teachers that want to just teach... The, I just want to... Empower these young minds, mm-hmm. but they're restricted by the curriculum, the school district and the superintendent and their principal and that system. But they really, really want to do the job that they signed up for. Mm-hmm. Same thing with some members of BLM that's on the rank and file side. Yo, I'm just trying to highlight these social issues. Hawk Newsom is a friend of mine. He runs the uh, the BLM chapter in one of the boroughs in New York. OK, what they want. That's the guy that I don't know if you all saw this footage a few years ago. There was a Trump rally and there was a guy from BLM that got up there and they gave him the mic and they communicated and it it was a it was a really beautiful moment. This is the same guy that they calling a terrorist right now. Okay. Right? With this being the case, no one's talking about during COVID, they fundraised to feed elders that, you know, Mills on Wheels couldn't get to them. You know what I mean? They're not in alignment with breaking up the, the traditional family values and all that other good stuff. So what I'm sharing with people is insert anything. Law enforcement officer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. teacher, grassroots BLM member. Mm-hmm. There's the ability for people to, that's on the ground, dealing with actual people, dealing with the real issues that are not in alignment with some made up mainstream, mm-hmm. uh, high level corporate sponsored bullshit. And that's what I think on the higher levels of BLM, what it is. But I think across, and I've been around the country eight times at this point. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that say Black Lives Matter because they're tired of the destruction in the community from whether it's outside forces or internal forces. But those are not the voices that we're hearing when they, you know, when media splashes it out there. Yeah. Media, if somebody puts on a Black Guns Matter t-shirt and shoots up a school, the media is going to say it was us. Mm -hmm. And that person ain't with us. Right. You know, so I just, I want to challenge everybody to be a little bit mindful. I know I went a little further in the answering of it. No, I understand. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.